on golf. That's right, everybody. This is the Callaway Stock Analysis. This is Stocker Finance. I'm your host, David Shore. We're going to be talking about quite a few things, including the acquisition of Top Golf in this video. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Stocker Finance for more, and subscribe to the newsletter below. It comes out once a month. It's an awesome email newsletter. Definitely go ahead and check that out. All right, so first off, let's just take a look at this uh, quick overview here of just the stock itself, trading at $30.69 as of making this video. Uh, if we look at the market cap, it's valued at about $2.88 billion with a dividend of 0.13%. 52-week high, which is trading just below of $32.59, significantly up, though, from its 52-week low of $4.70. Five cents. If you look at the past six months, it's up about 55, almost 56% over the past year, over almost 150% return over the past year, which is pretty incredible. And over the past five years, and over 250% return, another incredible return. They can tell it's completely recovered from the coronavirus or pandemic crash back in March slash February of 2020. If we go ahead and look at the max chart here, uh, from 2012 was really when this bullish trend of the company started. And I was wondering, okay, what happened during that time? How did the company turn itself around and start doing, you know, just immense growth, especially with its, you know, its stock price from there and the value of the company. And that's mainly due to its CEO who took over on March 5th in 2012 and remains the CEO till this day. The company is also headquartered in Carlsbad, California. It was founded by Eli Calloway Jr. If you don't know who that is, definitely look into his story. It's really cool. And it was founded in 1982. It's pretty much the largest golf manufacturer, equipment manufacturer. They make golf balls, probably their most, you know, popular products, the golf clubs, golf balls. Now they just acquired the company Top Golf, and we'll talk about that acquisition and why I think that's really positive for Callaway as a whole, and why I'm really bullish on the company because of that acquisition as well. But we'll talk about that more towards the end of the video. For now, let's go ahead and just dive into its fourth quarter financials. The next quarterly report comes in May. But we're going to go ahead and just take a look at these uh, financials really quickly. Their most recent ones: so plus 48.5 percent growth in club sales, plus 14.3 percent growth in golf ball sales, and 8.7 percent growth in apparel sales. That's great growth there for this company. On top of that, we look at their gap results here from uh, Q4 2020 to Q4 uh, 2019. We see a slight increase in net sales, uh, gross profit as well. You can see operating expenses also increased though. Uh, other income and expenses, we have a loss there and in income tax, blah, 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 blah. And net income slash loss, they lost $41 million there. If you go ahead and look at the non-gap in Q4 in 2019, it's quite similar. If we go ahead and just move on to its assets, and apologize if I'm sounding a little funny. Uh, my nose has been a little stuffy lately. Don't worry, it's not coronavirus. I'm doing okay. I just have some allergies. And as spring is approaching, flowers start blooming, the grass starts growing. And uh, yeah, it, my nose gets a little itchy. So I'm sorry if I sound a little stuffy while recording this video. Anyways, though, if you look at total assets here, it actually increased uh, pretty significantly there to $1.9 billion, $1.98 billion up from the same period in 2019 of $1.96 billion. Total liabilities are uh, actually, I'm trying to look at current liabilities here. My bad. Actually, decreased significantly from $523 million in total current liabilities down to $391 million total current liabilities. If we look at total current assets, it increased to $912 million from $789 million. That's a really good trend for this company to, you know, in the same period last year to be increasing their assets by so much while decreasing their liabilities, really putting this company in a much better uh, financial situation. Yes, their long-term debt did increase pretty significantly from 443 million to 650 million. But that's not something I'm too worried about, especially since their long-term liabilities decreased slightly as well. If we look at the shareholders' equity, we saw a slight decrease there, but nothing too substantial. If we move on here, we can just kind of briefly go through this stuff because I really want to get into some industry statistics and how the industry as a whole is doing, as well as the uh, the Top Golf acquisition, which I think are some of the most important and prominent parts of this analysis. We do have a net loss in 2020 of 126 million, significantly down from a net gain or net positive net income of 79 million at the same period in 2019. A lot of that, in my opinion, is due to decreased sales because of the pandemic, people not playing as much golf, not getting out as much. I think that trend is going to start reversing. I think we're going to start seeing this company really turn around. Um, I mean, I shouldn't even say turn around. It's already been turning around. It's already been doing very excellent in its performance. Uh, its balance sheet is looking very solid. The company has been growing significantly. Acquisition of Top Golf, as again, I'll touch on in a second here, has been, is, a, is an excellent, excellent acquisition for uh, further growth for this company. But that net loss does hurt to see 
on the paper here. If we go ahead and move on here, we can see net sales broke down into product categories. So golf clubs, golf balls, and apparel. Then you have gear, accessories, and other. So golf clubs increased significantly from 2020, from 2019 to 2020, three months ended. So from that quarter, increased 48.5% growth there to 170 million in golf clubs. Golf balls also increased 14.3% in apparel as well. Now, gear, accessories, and others decreased slightly. I don't think that's too big of a deal, but I think the reason we saw such an increase in golf clubs and golf balls is because of a couple of reasons. Number one, there's been a ton of sales lately, a ton of things going on with uh, Callaway and with different retail stores trying to get all their clearance items out of there, trying to turn over as much inventory as possible. And I think a lot of people have been taking advantage of that, especially a lot of prominent golfers. On top of that, people are really bored right now. They're getting a lot of you know stimulus checks. Uh, they're getting unemployment income, whatever it might be. People have uh, some extra cash laying around and some people are broke as well. I don't, don't want to, you know, make it sound like everyone's doing fantastic right now. It's not the case whatsoever. But a lot of people do have some extra money, especially the people who are working from home now, who have gotten a new job since the unemployment rate is decreasing very rapidly right now in the United States. But a lot of that means that, hey, I can get out on golf now. I can go buy those golf clubs I want, the golf balls. I'm bored. And if you get on the golf course, well, it's a great place for coronavirus to get outside because you're so separated from different groups. You're not all crowded together like you would be in basketball or like you would be in, let's say, you know, if you're trying to play football with your friends or something, you're going to be super crowded. It's going to be a lot of people there. Um, especially, you know, soccer as well or something like that. But golf is the one sport where you really can just be completely separate. You can play all by yourself and be totally fine and content with it and just play against yourself and try to keep beating the score that you've been getting. So, yeah, I think um, that there's no surprise that there's been an increase in golf club sales as well as golf balls and apparel because people want to start playing golf. They want to get back into it. And even though people might not be on the golf course as much lately, and we'll look at a statistic in a bit here that shows the number of people has been down over the past years, but it's starting to rebound the people number of people being on a golf course. I think a lot of people are preparing to play on golf courses, and I think a lot of people going into the future will want to play more and more golf as the sport becomes more popular amongst the younger generations. We go ahead and look at net sales by region. We saw an increase in Japan, slight increase there in Europe, a pretty significant increase, up 5.1%, and a pretty massive increase in the United States, up 34.2%. And the rest of the world, a pretty massive increase as well, 32%. Net sales by region here pretty much decreases across the board, uh, not too not, not too much to worry about here this is you know to, we had to take into consideration what happened in 2020 all the different events here first off you had the fires on uh, on the west coast of the united states which really just made it impossible to go outside for a few weeks there on top of that you also have you know the pandemic everyone's staying in for at least a couple of months here a bunch of stuff's going down california is still really restrictive where there's a ton of golf courses in california in Oregon, it's also being really restrictive. So there's a lot of states that are really in hardcore lockdown still, but you have a lot opening up as well, such as Texas, Florida, Nevada as well which have a lot of golf courses. I think we're going to start to see this trend in terms of net sales by region rather than be, you know, year over year. I think we're going to start to see it increase uh, in 2021 compared to 2020, but we'll wait and see what happens. Let's go ahead and just look at net sales here. We've already kind of touched on this, but net sales increased 374 million up from $311 million there. And let's move on here. We kind of already looked at this. Uh, let's see in 2020 trailing 12 month adjusted EBITDAs. Yeah, this is pretty interesting here. If we look at the past four quarters here, you can really Really tell where stuff happened, where stuff went wrong. So we have a net loss of 126 million. We suffered a loss in December. No surprise there during the winter months of 2020. Um, you know, it's colder. People don't want to go outside and play golf as much. They're spending less money on golf clubs. No surprise they lost money there. September starts to pick that up back up. And then June, we really had, you know, hardcore coronavirus stuff going on. March 31st, I think it started to turn around a little bit. Um, yeah, not too much to say there, though. Let's go ahead and look at the shareholder equity of this company over a long period of time since 2017. If we look at the, and also going to look at it here, on, not on a quarterly basis, but on an annual basis from 2008, it's increased significantly. In 2008, it was 580 million. Now it's 676 million, down a little bit from the past couple of years. But again, 2020 is a very unique year. So if we go ahead and eliminate 2020 from this chart, we're looking at a nice, steady growth in shareholder equity, which means they're really uh, managing their balance sheet pretty excellent. And on a quarterly basis, it's kind of a similar story as well. We go ahead and look at this. This, uh, this is also shareholder. This is assets, I believe, uh, over time. And if we go ahead and look at the gross margin, really impressive gross margin of 41.37%. Trending downward, not a big deal there, though. It's still 41%. It's an excellent gross margin. Operating margin down this year, same with uh, net margin. 
Sorry, I got a little cough there. No big deal there. If you look at the previous, you know, again, 2020 is a very unique year. Some very unique quarters here, uh, especially during these past few winter months. Golf has not been as popular, but as spring is coming around, I believe we'll see these margins start to turn around, especially with the reopening of a bunch of states, people wanting to get outside more, uh, coronavirus and vac vaccines being given out. You know, there's over a million vaccines per day being given out in the United States right now. Employment Unemployment decreasing pretty rapidly as well. So it's looking very bullish for the United States as a whole. Its economy is looking pretty forward as well, despite some inflation and uh, some rising yield rates. But again, I think for the golf industry and sticking, sticking to this, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the statistics in the golf industry. But I think it's looking good for Callaway as a whole going into the future, especially in the spring, coming spring quarter, and then going into the summer as well. And the fall, I expect those quarters to be pretty excellent for this company. If you look at the past earnings here, they missed their last earnings report, beat the last one before that, as well as the last one before that, and slightly missed before that. Kind of all over the place with uh, whether they're beating their expectations or missing their expectations. Q1 uh, fiscal 2020 will be May 6th after hours. Maybe I'll try to live stream that on this channel. All the companies I'm interested in that I follow a lot, such as Tesla, AMD, Microsoft, uh, Disney, etc. I really try to live stream all their earnings calls unless they're already being live streamed on YouTube for those who have trouble finding it. And I also just kind of like to commentate a little bit afterwards, give my two cents on the earnings call. Anyways, let's go ahead and look at some golfing industry statistics. So golf's overall reach is an estimate 108 million. That means one out of every three Americans from the age six up played golf on a course or off the course or watched the sport or read it about it in 2019. So basically every single American knows what golf is. You know, everyone's either, you know, held a golf club or done something involving golf, whether it's reading a golf magazine, watching a game of golf, just going out, hanging out with your dad while they're playing golf, going on a business trip and playing golf, whatever it might be, pretty much every American, you know, one out of three, age six, I mean, for age six up, that's a huge range there of people pretty much everyone's heard of golf or has played golf in some sort of uh, in some sort of way every year. So that's really, it's a, a good statistic there that the, the golf reaches that broad of an audience. If we go ahead and look at people who played on a golf course for the first time in 2019, this is a more important statistic in my opinion, because this shows whether the sport is growing or shrinking. So it's 2.5 million in 2020. The industry has six straight years with more than 2 million beginners. By comparison, there are 1.5 million beginners in 2011. Prior to the past three years, the previous recorded high of 2.4 million was set in 2020 or 2000 when Tiger Woods was at a height of his popularity, which makes complete sense. So it's really interesting here that, you know, in 2019, they did 2.5 million people playing on a golf course for the first time, which beats the prior record when Tiger Woods was at the height of his popularity. So the fact that they beat that record as of 2019 shows that the sport is trending in the right direction. It's continuing to grow. Beginners are playing all the time. That's a really good sign for the sport. If we go ahead and look at it, it said in total, there were about 441 one million rounds of golf played on golf courses throughout the U.S. in 2019. That's up slightly from 434 million in 2018 due to a mild improvement in weather conditions and regions with a richer supply of golf facilities. Facilities. I will be really interesting to see what the statistic is in 2020. My guess it'll be significantly down from 2019, but I expect in 2021 it'll rebound and most likely be significantly greater than this 2019 statistic. And so many people are eager to get out on the course. Now let's go ahead and look at some Google Trends here, and I compared golf, basketball football and baseball as you can tell golf is actually slightly above football overall in terms of just search interest basketball significantly higher football uh, again slightly below golf baseball slightly below golf as well so just basketball is the only one that's really dominating in, in terms of the search engine but let's look up some other searches because just people who just look up golf by itself which is what this is recording it's not a very accurate representation of interest in the sport so look up golf near me you can tell that since 2004 this trend has been increasing significantly especially in the recent years over the past like 10 years and that's a really good sign for the course because if you're looking at golf near me, that generally means you want to go play golf, which means you're going to need a golf club, which means you're going to need golf balls, which means you're going to need golf gear, a bag, uh, maybe you need a shirt, maybe you know you need a polo because you got to go and have the right dress wear to go to a golf course, you need a hat, you got to have the visor, whatever it might be. Um, you know, this all benefits Callaway as a company and the sport, if it's growing, that means the company Callaway will grow as well. So it's a great sign for that company. I look up golf courses near me, just change up the search a little bit, pretty similar results, uh, results, driving range near me, uh, kind of a similar search as well. Uh, very similar results as well for that. So all good statistics there. Now let's look at the number of participants in golf on a golf course in the United States. And this is since 2006. So this is actually experiencing a significant decrease and then it's starting to rebound since 
since about 2016 we saw it level off and then it seems like the, the sport as a whole or the people number of people playing on a golf course has started to rebound i'll be interested to see again what the 2020 statistic is but i suspect the 2021 statistic will be more along the lines of the 2012 2011 levels which will be up significantly from the 2019 levels now why is it decreasing over time according to this chart why is that happening and why did it start to level off I think this is the primary reason. This is what I could conjure up here, but please let me know in the comments below or tweet at me um, if you have a better idea of why the number of participants in golf on a golf course in the United States was decreasing until about 20, let's see, 2016. Well, the reason for it is I think simply golf was more of an older sport. On top of that, it was a very male-dominated sport. And I think what was going on here is I really saw a shift to where more women are getting out on the course from about 2016. And on top of that, I think what we're seeing is, yes, a lot of those older golfers were starting to die off. They were aging out of the sport. They can no longer play to injuries. And so it took a while for the new generation to grow up to be old enough to where they can start going out and play on the sport by themselves without having to go out with parents and stuff. So my age, you know, the millennials, and you also have all the Gen Zs as well, they're all starting to get to that age. Well, millennials, of course, are already way past that age, but Gen Z especially are starting to get to that age where even though some of the boomers and stuff are starting to die off or, you know, age out of being able to play golf, I think a lot of the younger generation is now getting involved in the sport. And that's where the past few years, the interest has started to rise again. And we're seeing the number of participants on a golf course in the United States start to increase. And I suspect it'll continue to increase for the next few years, especially in 2021 and 2022, though. Now let's talk about the anticipated topic of this video, the merger with Top Golf. So they created an unrivaled global leader in the game of golf. And I think that title is perfect for it because this merger with Top Golf or acquisition, whatever it might, you know, they, they use stock to purchase the company essentially. It's um I I think it really just improves Callaway as a company overall. There's so much they can go, so many different directions they can go with this. But let's talk about what this does for the business. We're going to talk about the board of directions here for the combined company, because that'll kind of give us some insight into the potential leadership changes or what's going on. So the combined company's board of directors now consists of 13 directors, including new three new directors appointed by the top golf shareholders. Chip Brewer, sorry if pronouncing that name wrong, will continue to lead the combined company as president and chief executive officer. Dolph Barely or Barrel, I'm definitely pronouncing that wrong. Sorry, Dolph. Or, geez, I'm really butchering your name there. My bad, man. Will continue to lead the top golf business through a transition period, at which time he intends to step down and pursue other leadership opportunities. John Lundgren, Gren, God, geez, I'm just butchering these last names today. Holy moly. Will continue as chairman of the board of the combined company, while Eric Anderson will serve as vice chairman. Um, on top of that, the combined company will be headquartered in Carlsbad, California. So that's the Callaway's, uh, Callaway's place there. That's where they're headquartered right now. With Top Topgolf continuing to operate from its headquarters in Dallas, Texas. So that's pretty interesting. Not too many leadership changes there. Um, the fact that you know Chip Ruhr is going to remain as the president chief executive officer is a really good sign for the company. He's not leaving. He wants to continue to grow. That means he's got a long-term vision for Callaway. It's a great sign for the leadership of this company. Let's talk about some more specifics of this merger here. So if we go ahead, they said they owned about 90 million shares to Topgolf shareholders. Oh, sorry, misread that. The Carlsbad Company was an early investor in Topgolf dating back to 2006. It already owned a 14% stake in the firm. At the time, Callaway stock traded in the $19.40 range, valuing the price of Topgolf that it didn't already own at $2 billion. But Callaway's stock price has been rising since then. Based on Monday's closing price of $29.52, Callaway paid $2.66 billion to acquire the rest of Topgolf beyond its existing ownership. Chief Executive Chip Brewer noted that the transformational combination has already created and will continue to create meaningful shareholder value, which I 100% agree with, which seemingly was a reference to the gains in the company's share price since the acquisition was announced. Let's look at Top Golf and see the interest in Top Golf to see whether this company is experiencing some sort of growth or interest over time. And it's kind of a similar trend as the golf industry as a whole, which is a great sign as well. Now, why I think the Top Golf acquisition is good. Let's go over some points here. Number one, as we already looked at, golf is increasing in popularity over time. Number two, Galloway can uh, Callaway is in sell golf equipment and promote courses at Top Golf. I wouldn't be surprised if now, after this acquisition or merger, every Top Golf in the country now is going to have a section within the store where you can go buy Callaway golf clubs, golf balls, merch, whatever it is, and only Callaway golf balls, golf clubs, etc. And I think that's going to be really huge for promoting, one, number one, the sport of golf, and number two, for really just improving Callaway's bottom line there, improving their sales and their revenue, while also um, you know, just benefiting from owning Top Golf as well. 
So it's really a win-win for Callaway. Also, it caters to the younger crowd, which will help get them into golf, which will increase some of those statistics we're looking at. Light at the end of the tunnel for the pandemic means more people are going to get out on the course, especially out on, uh, you know, playing top golf. States are reopening. That's good for Top Golf as well in the future. Top Golf is not as crowded as other activities as well. So it's going to be a more popular activity to go participate in. Same with golf as a whole, as I touched on. And the popularity is growing. Such business is growing as well. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this brief analysis here. Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash stalker finance. Check out these videos as well. And there's a newsletter link below. It's a once a month email newsletter where I'd give uh, some investing tips, some whatever it's a market analysis. I also give uh, specific stocks that I'm interested in and do some analysis, some written analysis there. So definitely go ahead and check that out. And please subscribe if you're interested in that. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.